an hour, and we're going to go through quite a bit of information. My business cards go around the classroom. For those of you who are online, uh, my phone number is 623-237-2388. Um, Travis Smith. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I think I'm Travis Elite Integrity Group on Instagram, and Travis Lee Smith on Facebook. So feel free to connect with me. Um, we'll jump right into it. Wholesale 101, what every agent needs to know about adding another revenue stream. Um, kind of a little teaser we put out was how to shift proof your business. Um, anytime, every time, every day, there are wholesales that are happening constantly. I was working on three of them on my way here today as, as we speak. So out in internet land, things are happening and contracts are shifting and things are happening so that we can make money every day. It's a beautiful thing. So we're gonna jump right in. The plan for the day, I'm gonna go through the introduction, talk about an entrepreneur mindset, talk about investors, what the heck is a wholesale, how to identify wholesale properties, the offer process and contract, that's where you're gonna to wanna to have your phone handy and take some snapshots of my screens as we go through. Um, uh, extra strategies, I'm sorry? Can you get the slides in? Can you get the slides? I could probably put it up on, on something yes okay. that might be make sure we get all i get all your contact information yes. we can figure out something for the slides uh we'll go through exit strategies we'll talk about an assignment or versus double escrow these are some really cool key phrases that we're going to go through and then we'll talk about resources which title companies that are very good at doing wholesales who who understands how to do a double escrow those are important terms and you're going to want to make sure you rely on people with expertise because just like everything in real estate, it can bite you. So I want to make sure you're safe as we go through this. All right, my story. Uh, I grew up in the back of my dad's Suburban. It looked very similar to that. It only had three doors. If you look on the driver's side, which you can't see in this picture, there's only one door back there. Um, please silence all your cell phones at this point. I would really appreciate it. Um, anyways, I grew up in the back of that truck doing rehabs and remodels as uh, I, would, I was going through high school, junior high, college, and I kept saying to myself, man, there's gotta be something better out there. I'm gonna go get an education. I'm gonna go to NAU. So I went to NAU and got a degree in communications and it's communications degree with an emphasis in family and interpersonal skills. It's basically a prereq degree for something else. <laughs> so it really doesn't do a whole lot. Um, I went to work, I was a youth pastor for a little while. And then my wife and I, who were high school sweethearts, got married. And for some reason, we like wanted to start a family. And they like to eat. They have this habit of eating. Yeah. Yeah. So I need to make money. So I went back to. This is fun, isn't it? <laughs> this is awesome. Now, Come on. You can sit right here and right here. Oh, the other There's another room. chair right here. There are no fire hazards yeah. here at my home group. It's so good to see you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll pick up the story so we can just keep going on time. Um, I, I got my degree, worked really hard. A uh, buddy of mine said, hey, Travis, do you want to start working back in construction? Okay. Thank you. I'll have to wait a second. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Oh, one more. All right, we did it. Yay. OK, so my buddy said, hey, Travis, do you want to come back and work in construction? Uh, there's a little brain damage here, but you'll make some money. Sure, I gotta feed my kids, so yes. So I started a career in the new home building uh, with the new home builders. I worked from 1998 through 2012, so almost, almost 12, 20 years, 15, 20 years. Um, I started with UDC Homes. Um, I was the, they called me the cock bitch. So I ran around with cocking gun and I would make things look really pretty. That was my job. So I worked my way up. I was a really good cock bitch and worked my way up to assistant superintendent. Uh, then uh, went off and got a uh, master's degree in business so that I wouldn't have to do that anymore. Uh, my thesis statement was on if a home builder were to uh, purchase some land up by Tremonto and build a semi-custom product, how well they would do. So I had, had the, all the, the charts, the graphs, the money that everybody was gonna make, presented it to the VP of construction, and he said, you know, Travis, we really appreciate you, so thankful that you're here. I understand you wanna get into construction management, I totally get it. However, you're the youngest superintendent we have. Yes, you have all the best numbers. Yes, all the customer relationship uh, surveys say that you're the best. However, you need to wait your turn. There's guys that have you know 20 years experience, 
and they're not going to listen to you, so we're just going to shelf this. Six months later, we opened a semi-custom product up in uh, the, North, uh, the Toronto area, and he was the golden child that brought this idea to the company. So, wonder where he got all the information. Amazing. <laughs> So I made a change. I went to work at Dell Web. I worked at, with Dell Web for about seven, eight years. I uh, was a project manager for Sun City Grand, Portobello, Sun City Festival. Um, we had 23, 25 superintendents that were within our group that we hired straight out of college or the military. I knew their significant others, wives, they knew mine. I don't really know what other way to coach and train and mentor, but to be extremely immersed with each other. Who can tell me what happened in 2000? Okay. Nothing market good. took a big Nothing old honk and poop, sure. right? That, and every, it sucked. It sucked for everybody. So all those superintendents that worked in our group, I had to let them all go. I hired them and I had to let them go. Uh, during that time, we had four divorces and a suicide attempt. And I told my wife, I said, if ever we get involved with another group, I always want to protect how they make a living so this doesn't happen again. This is crushing. It's soul crushing. So, uh, that transcends into the wholesale dynamic. Um, one fine Friday, I, I lasted another 18 months after all of the cuts. One fine Friday, uh, my boss came to me, uh, shook my hand, gave me a pound of butt, gave me a sandwich check and said, you're released. And I said, hallelujah, praise God, I can go do what I wanna do. Um, I've been wanting to flip for a long time and we had started a retail company on the side called GGB Enterprises in which we had been helping new home buyers change or <coughs> retro their new house into a home. So we would do uh, media walls and landscaping and whatever they wanted to do in the backyard. So we had this crew of people, which I got to kind of hand pick from all of the trades that were losing jobs, got to hand pick those guys. So as um, I got my severance check, I cashed in my 401k, took a loan from a family member, and we went out and we started buying houses and flipping. To date, from 2000, so it was 2009, from that point until now, I've had my hand in approximately 430 wholesales or flips. Nice. So I've done a few things. Um, and again, I don't know everything about this, but I'm gonna give you as much knowledge as I can give you in an hour, okay? Cool. So that whole thing was just to lead up to say, hey, I kinda know what I'm doing. Okay, all right. Uh, right now, uh, we own Elite Integrity Group. My wife and I own that together. That's our real estate company. Uh, we also own GGD Enterprise, that is our house flip company. So we have two companies right now. Um, this is how I kind of view life. So the success wheel, there's, it's like a stool. If you got a stool and three legs, God's on the top. We all, all need to have some type of accountability. That's really the whole reason I have God there. He's our sense of right and wrong, one way or the other. If you agree with that, great. If you don't, that's okay too. Um, the other three things, you need to have balance in relationship. We need to have body. Our body needs to be somewhat in shape so we can keep up with all this stuff. And then our business. All three of these are necessary in order for our, our life to be successful. Entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset. That's a fun word to say. Entrepreneurial. Okay. In real estate, this is where we're going to get a little bit uh, interactive. There are several ways to make money in real estate. I've kind of put an acronym up here. Let's see if we can guess what these are. What's a B stand for? Buyers. buyers. Good. We make money on buyers. All of us do that, right? Yeah. Well, most of us, if we're, not, if we're licensed agents, we make money on buyers. How about us? Sellers. 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 Good job. How about R? Renters. Rentals. Good job. WS? Wholesale. Wholesale. Yes, you're the smartest class I've ever had. Good job. Uh, F and F? Fix and flip. Fix and flip. Last one, C. Commercial, right on. That's that's how we make money. Those are all the areas that I focus on in real estate. I do every bit, all every one of these, and I do it in two different states, here and in California. So as you're expanding your business, consider these revenue streams and in different markets. That's what I'm talking about when I say we need to shift proof our business. That when this, if you're balanced or have revenue coming in from all these or know how to do all these. No matter what the market shoots at you, if the market can take a crap tomorrow, Trump can come up with some cockamamie scheme, whether you like it or not, I don't care. However, it could happen and it could impact your business. So if you're in these areas, you'll be safe. Uh, volume is a key. Always wanting to turn volume. I don't get stuck on price points. 
if you do, if you get stuck there, then there's a lot of brain damage and you slow your production down. So if someone's nickel and diamond you over 500 bucks, a thousand bucks, fine, just move on. Do the deal. The more deals you do, the more money you'll make. We'll talk about that more. Lead with earnings. Keep your overhead low. As you come in to the real estate business, um, there's gonna be all kinds of temptation. And unfortunately, our business, we feed on each other. So there's all kinds of people out there that have ideas for um, lead generation tools or lead capture tools or marketing schemes. And they're all trying to tap your check. They're all trying to tap your money. Listen to people who know what they're doing. Find someone who's a mentor and knows what they're doing so you don't spend, I call it stupid tax. I pay a lot of stupid tax in this, in this industry. So protect yourself. Grow as you earn. Lead forward with revenue. Coaching, I just kind of mentioned that. It really, really, really matters who you get coaching from. When you're talking about a new aspect of the industry, find someone who actually is active in it. Oftentimes those who teach, um, I learned this when I, the first company I worked for, um, it, they have red letters and uh, I went to work for a big box company when I first started in real estate. All the training people they brought in were uh, in either title, had been a realtor in the past, here you look, or, but they weren't active, actively working in real estate. So they're trying to teach us a skill, but really weren't doing that skill. So when you're, <laughs> when you're trying to find someone, find someone who's actually doing business in that skill. So that's, that'd be a qualifier. Is this helping so far? Yes. Giving you good information? Okay. Investors. Investors come in all shapes, sizes, sexes. Um, well, uh, there's only two, so male or female. <laughs> so, um, yeah, well, you never know. There's Bruce out there. So um, that was meant to be funny. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. So um, most of the people that are investors that I've worked with are, are guys. Um, one of my biggest buyers right, buyers right now is a lady. And she's in a, a nice, she's usually dressed in a pencil dress or a pencil skirt and doing her business all around. The other guys that I work with, most of them are have a ball cap on, wear a t-shirt, shorts, Nikes. Um, the one that I did the most business with was probably worth $30 million from the Pacific Northwest and that's how he dressed every day. So never judge a book by his cover, as you never know. I mean, he had a big old burly beard and everything so you never know investors come in all shapes and different in sizes <laughs> know your audience let's talk about different investors there's full-time investors these guys and ladies are super fast-paced um, they usually operate off of text you'll send them a deal they'll say yes or no within minutes they'll know the area they'll know uh, what their parameters are um, they're very intense the numbers very much matter as you're new in this you ask a lot of questions from whoever you're getting the house from. Define what's ROI, what's what's the square footage, where is the house, the address, the uh, you'll also need the uh, legal description, how many bedrooms, how many bathrooms, does it have a pool, when was the last time the AC was replaced, how is the roof? See, I just rattled off 10 questions that every investor is going to ask you. So you want to know that. Um, also, these full-time investors, they know their market. They'll often talk in zip codes, they'll talk in neighborhoods. Um, it's just important to know who you're speaking with. Key indicators, they go off of margin standards. They have several exit strategies. They may wholesale it to somebody else. They may flip it. They may turn it into a rental. They may turn it into an ARV and me or VRBO. So you never know. Um, they make faster decisions <coughs> and all of their labor is contract labor. You will not see them out there fixing and flipping a house. The Property Brothers, that's a scam, that's a show, they don't actually flip the house, they have contractors. All right, cool. Everybody get with me so far? Cool. Then there's the do-it-yourselfers. I love these guys. These are the first time people that have watched all the Property Brothers shows and really have it figured out. They really know what's going on because it's on TV. So they're very patient, they're very scared, they're skittish, as like I like to say. They have a lot of questions. They're gonna to wanna to know whose grandmother actually lived in the house before you bought it four years ago, and was there a cat? So there's lots of questions like that. They're gonna rely heavily on you and your expertise for the research. So when you give them information, you wanna give enough information so that they can do some research on their own, but not so you get bogged down. Uh, key indicators. 
They have limited exit strategy. They're here to fix and flip this house. That's compel our high water, that's what they're doing. Whether they lose money or make money, that's what's happening. They don't want a rental, they want to get out of this house. They're concerned about a specific money, or a specific uh, amount of money that they're gonna earn. It's not about a margin, it's more, am I gonna make $10,000? Am I gonna make $5,000? Am I gonna make $2,000 or $30,000? They wanna know exactly, and all you can do is, I think you're gonna be in this range because none of us can predict the market. Even as well and as sharp as we are, None of us can say exactly you're going to make this much money. So give them a range. 20000 to 25000 This is where I see you now. So talk in those terms. Um, they take longer to evaluate deals, and they are convinced that they're going to save so much money if they do it themselves, which is exactly the opposite. You want to contract your labor in order to make money. The faster you get on the market, the faster you will make money. Because who can tell me what's happening as the house sits? Holding costs. Holding costs. You get hosed by holding costs. Who has heard of private money lenders? Yeah. Ouch, ouch, I paid 18% on all the houses I that I flipped. 12. 12 was good. Most of the ones I did myself, I was paying 18%. So, yeah, time, time is money, baby. You know, gotta be clicking along and help them because they don't understand that. Help them. Okay, marketing for both. When, my father-in-law has this amazing saying. Uh, right now in, in, our, in our family, we have uh, our kids, for my brother and sister-in-law, Kirsten and I, we've got kids from 20 years old to 5 years old. And when we, we have family, family meal every Sunday, and my father-in-law says it this way, when we come to family dinner, everybody should be able to eat. So there shouldn't be something funky or weird or not fit into the, the, the taste palette for everyone at the dinner table. It's the same thing when you're marketing to your wholesales. You want to be able to market to your rigid, amazing investor that knows everything to your knucklehead, brand new person that knows nothing. So you are the expert, you need to give them the information. Know your terms, uh, ROI, what's that? Return on investment. Yes, I told you guys it was the smartest class I've ever had, good job. Cap rate. <coughs> oh, did I still feel cap rate? No. Okay, good. Perfect, okay. Um, market area, that's something that's easy. I'm gonna show you my blog spot here in a second. I'm kind of moving away from using this. Um, most of the stuff I do right now is on text. I will, right now, 95% of my texts are getting opened. My emails and blog spot that I was putting out, it's like 14%. So I'm not wasting time on that anymore. Plus, whenever you put something out on the internet, you have to have all the full crap of your, well, sorry. You have to have all of your disclosures, your, uh, equal housing opportunity, your real estate sign, your broker sign, all that, or you get in trouble. You don't want to get fined, right? I don't like to get fined. Nobody likes to get fined. So um, I didn't mean it as maybe more of the minutia that you have to go with. So um, the text is a lot easier. It's people you know. They know that you're a wholesaler. It's already been disclosed. Text is so much easier. Um, which I went all that style. All right, cool. Next, first step of getting involved with wholesaling is having a database of other people that want to buy houses from you. So right now you have a database of buyers and sellers and past clients. Yes? Yes. We should, yes. That's just running normal business. If we're going to add another revenue stream, you have to add another database. So this is your database of investors. These are the people that have cash or availability to cash to purchase these homes. Relationships matter huge in the wholesale market. Everybody knows everybody that's a major player in the wholesale market. Having a good name in this market is paramount. If you have anything attached to your name that's not good, everyone will know. So make sure you're dealing honestly, you're trustworthy, <coughs> make good choices, put others first. All those things that we learned in Canada, right? You, that's the way to play in the sandbox in the wholesale world. Uh, demonstrate a hard con con contribution. As you're working with these new uh, investors, bring value to the conversation. The, be the best way not to get in the business is, hey man, how can I bring you a wholesale deal? Or what do you, are you willing to buy? It's more, hey, here's something I have. <coughs> do you like this? Does it, am I meeting your need set? Is this what you're looking for? If not, can you tell me a little bit more what you're looking for so I can provide that? Most investors love having new wholesalers along because usually new wholesalers bring a different uh, set of 
of, of homes that others don't have. Uh, advertise on social media, build a pipeline as you succeed with one or two, other other investors will hear about you and reach out. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Everybody following so far? What is a wholesale property? This is the working definition, this is what I came up with. Uh, undervalued property in an area of appreciation. That's what it means. I'm sorry? Oh, sorry. <laughs> an undervalued property in an area of appreciation. So we're looking for the house that's a little run down, that's dated. Grandma's, grandma's houses are awesome. Cat lady's houses, we love those houses. House that sound, smell like cat pee, that smells like money to me. So that's a little, uh, little poem that you can use if you want to. Um, the, the houses that make people wretch, that's what you want. Those are gonna make the most money because you can get them at a very low discount. You make your money in your pocket. Everybody good on that? Yeah. Oops. Let's talk about values. Market value. Who can tell me what market value is? Oh, that's right there. It's kind of crazy, yeah. Okay. Market value is a price a buyer is willing to pay and a price a seller is willing to sell. That establishes market value. Is market value important to us? Yes, yes. We want to know market value. Appraised value. What's appraised value? What the pigs will loan, exactly. Is sometimes market value different than appraised value? Yeah, absolutely. Big time, right? That's, that's sometimes scary. Wholesale value, this is where we get into new definition. Wholesale value is somewhere between 70 and 80% of market value. So when you're evaluating a home for wholesale pricing, wholesale value, you want to find what market value is. Comparables. So you're going to look at a house or look at, you have the subject property and you know that, man, it's got those... Uh, pinky white oak cabinets from 1988 and it's got laminate countertops the carpet hasn't been changed since then it smells like cat pee um, the yard is overgrown beyond belief okay cool so we know what the subject property looks like now let's look at what's happened ARV who can tell me ARV? after repair value yes good job so we're gonna look at what's comped at the highest and we can say okay it's gonna take 30 to 40,000, I'm just using an example, to get our subject property to that level. So we're back that 30 to 40 grand out, then we take 70 to 80% of that value so <coughs> everybody can make money. You take the 70 to 80% to the market, repair, the market value or market, the repair value? The after repair value, you're gonna evaluate that. Mm -hmm. Look at the difference between after repair value to market value of subject property. What it would sell, what someone would buy it at mm -hmm. or sell it at today. Reduce that by 70 to 80%. Okay. Or, 30, 20 to 30%. Yeah. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. 20 to 30% below market value. Yeah. Correct. Free, free <laughs> repair value. Free repair value. <laughs> yep. That's going to be our capture point. That's where we want to capture. The closer you are to 70%, the more likely it is you're going to make money. Cool? Any questions so far? Everybody's on the same page. Right on. Okay, cool. This is my value analytics. I use this on every flip that I do. Um, this is, I love Excel sheets because it's just numbers and they don't lie. So this one's formula it out. I can share this with you guys if you'd like, but I'm gonna walk through it real quick so you know how I evaluate deals. I evaluate it like my the investors that I work with. And for the newbies, this makes sense. So purchase price of $200,000. This is my front side and back side. You can see the two, two sections. The hard money loan is going to be 160,000. How much is that of the purchase price? 80 percent. That's this is most common is 80 percent. Some people will do 90 percent. I've got a couple lenders that will do 100 percent and 100 percent of they'll fi also finance 100 percent of the flip. So your hard money down payment would be forty thousand dollars, right? Cool. Uh, interest on hard money, 10 percent for six month term at four months. So 10% on that is going to be $1,600 a month for four months. So that's your carry, $6,400. Making sense so far? Yeah. Okay. Closing costs around $1,500. Remodel, $35,000. You have to have insurance. I have heard so many investors, fix and flip knucklehead idiots that are not putting insurance on your, on your house. That is the quickest way to destroy your family. If you're trying to build something for your family, don't be stupid. Keep insurance, and I'm speaking to the internet. None of you guys would do that. No, absolutely not. Okay. 
Uh, APS of water, that's just gonna be you know what, what you need for carry costs there. Total cash invest is 84,300. Front sides cost 244,300. Now we get into backside. So here's your estimated renovated sales price for your ARV. Real, real estate commissions, 5%. Whenever I sell a property to a, an investor, I always offer the discount and I'll do 2% to me on the sale. You wanna make sure you're washing the hand that's helping you. So just offer it. Don't wait for them to ask, just, hey, this is what I do as a thank you to you. I really appreciate what you've done for me. Let me list the house at 5%. They get all excited that you're just willing to play a game with them, right? And what does that do for you? Repeat business. You just got a listing automatically. Isn't that beautiful? So you made money already, and now you're gonna make money again. That's not bad. Uh, title fees, fifteen hundred bucks. Total fees, sixteen five. Total front side costs. Total earnings, thirty nine thousand two hundred, or a forty six percent ROI. That ain't bad, right? Yeah. People would do this all day. And guess what? They do. Yeah. It's beautiful but we have to explain it in terms that they can understand. Does everybody here understand this? Does anyone have questions on this? This is the critical piece. You have to understand this. All right, value to our investors. You wanna bring value one way or the other. Um, wholesales come in many different shapes and sizes. There's not a one size fits all. Like I said, I work with 180 cash investors. I send one text to all of them. I make sure that each one of them can get something out of that text. Um, they have their own preferences, formulas. I have one guy that only buys quarter lots. That's all he does. So he gets all my stuff, but he always looks to see if it's a quarter lot. Our role is to see the prop, the value in the property in their eyes. At where it comes down, guys, we're still salespeople. So we have to demonstrate the value, just like you do with a buyer and seller. We learned how to speak buyer and seller lingo, right? The same thing with investors. We have to speak their language. So to, bur to bring a perceived value to them. Identifying wholesale properties. Where I started is I started looking at what other people had available. Um, Facebook, I looked on email lists, and then I would call and talk to them and say, hey, hey, this is Travis, I'm new in the wholesale business. I saw that you have this property on 123 East Main. I have a couple investors. Would it be okay with you if I co-branded or, or rebranded your wholesale and sold it to them, would you be willing to pay me a piece on that action or do I need to upsell this? Do I need to tag in my fee to my guys? And just ask those questions. That's how I started. I started making by making $500 to $1,000 per deal. Sometimes $2,500, I get all excited if I make $2,500. So as I grew in the business, I've made up to $30,000 on one wholesale. So you just have to start and grow. Just like you started your buyer and seller business, it's the same thing with the wholesale business. If you're looking to get rich quick, this isn't it. This is a nurturing business. All, there's so many people that come in this industry, their are flashes in the pan. It's not a get rich quick scheme. You can't do it that way. If you try to do it that way, everybody will see it and they won't use you. Um, ask for permission market. Oh, this is really, really important. That's why it's in bold. Don't forget to mark up your fee. I made that mistake one time, and my wife was really, really mad at me because I worked for free. I wasn't gonna lose face to the buyer. I wasn't gonna lose face to the seller. I did the transaction, and I learned my lesson. So please learn from me. I paid stupid tax, right? Yeah, learn, learn from my stupid tax. Know my price versus your price. If you are gonna join my list and when I send you buyer or send you deals, Make sure you understand that price that I'm sending it to you is always net to me. There's no commission, there's no 3% going to you, there's no seller paying you something. That price that I mark to you is my price. Your price is, has to be something different for you to make money. Right, does everybody understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, head nods, this is really, really important. I want you to make money. If you don't make money, then it's no fun, right? Okay. Identifying wholesale properties. The best way to do it is find them yourself. Yeah. Through your own database, through the people you know. Start saying, hey, I buy, I've got cash buyers. We buy houses for cash. Put Softly put it into your feed on Facebook, Instagram. Hey, does anybody need some help? I'm here to help if, if you go through a divorce or going through you know, some medical <coughs> needs or just life's got you down or if you've got, if you just inherited grandma's house that needed a new air conditioner, the roof is shot, 
and all that's it's you know back from 1955 be that person that's a solution be the solution put the marketing together so you're a solution person uh, you can also look at stuff on back page craigslist uh, potential sellers those who <laughs> advertise rentals all the time the, oftentimes you can call them and say hey so you got this house for rent uh, that, obviously you're a, an investor right Oh, heck no, I'm not an investor. I got this from my sister's brother's kid, and I, blah, blah, and they'll throw up all the details on you. Or they'll say, yes, I am an investor. Great, can I bring you some more deals? I, 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 do. I wholesale a lot. Is it okay if I send you stuff? Yeah, that'd be great. You just built your database. Um, bigger market margins are when you find them, them, them yourself. Mark it up. The offer process. I'm, I'm really kind of trying to speed through this. If you guys have questions, please stop me. Are you finding value so far? Is this working? Okay, cool. The first call. When you, I've found several deals on Craigslist, um, and they don't even have to be in Phoenix. I've done one in Payson. I've done one at Holbrook Cabins. It doesn't matter. Even you know what's even crazy? You can make money on trailers, like literally trailers. We can make money doing this. Establish a relationship. When you make the call or you go to visit the person have some type of connection. Just like we do with our buyers and sellers, if you hear a baby in the background, oh, I hear your baby, how old is your child? Or if you have a dog in the background, you hear a dog, oh, how many dogs do you have? I've got three, small, medium, and large. Make that connection and create a rapport with that person because we have had people go with us even though our offer is less than other people because they like us. Because you know, I'll, I'll just be really honest with you, a lot of investors, are they're rough around the edges. We'll just say it that way. The rough around the edges. So we want to discover how, what, where, when, why, how much. We're going to ask a lot of questions. When was the roof replaced? When was the AC replaced? Tell me about the kitchen. Tell me about your situation. Why do you want to sell this house for cash? What value can I bring here? What's find the pain? Where is the pain, and how are you going to be a solution to it? Does that make sense? Cool. Here to help, and then set the appointment. The visit. Always do your homework before. That's why God gave us Monsoon. That's why God gave us Maricopa County Assessor. You can get all kinds of information. You can know what loans on the house. You, you, you can go into that meeting armed and dangerous because you know what's up. Reestablish that relationship. Remember me, I'm Travis. I'm the guy we talked about the sale of, or we talked about your, our dogs and the kids. And man, thank you so much for inviting me over. It's, it's okay if we sit down and chat or would you mind just taking me on a quick tour and let's just talk? The more conversational you keep it, and less like, I am a robot, I am here to buy your house, it's going to be a lot better. Uh, verify. A lot of people that are trying to sell their home, they want to tell you how amazing it is, just like everybody else, right? So they're going to have a different set of value than what's reality. So as you're going through looking at the house, you're going to verify the things that they told you on the phone. Was that AC actually replaced in 2010, or is that some Frankenstein monstrosity up on the roof that you know that you saw from the junkyard, or it looks like a Chevy truck engine? You know, so check those things out. Take pictures. What do we want pictures of? Kitchen, bathroom, family room, master bedroom, backyard, front yard, roof, AC. You want pictures of all that. So as you're walking. It's okay if I take a couple pictures and just take pictures as you go. And you want the serial numbers too, right? No. Okay. No. no. At, the, at the end of this, we're going to get to a point of what I'm looking for. If you guys want to do some of this type of business, yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Pictures of the front, the back, the family room, mm -hmm. the kitchen, a couple pictures of the kitchen, bathrooms. So I know in my mind, what is it going to take to rehab this house? <coughs> so I want to know if there's popcorn ceilings. Um, want to know the condition of the floor is it tile or is it bad is it and if it smells like cat pee put in there cat pee smile face because i'll get excited and make me happy um set the tone i work with the team and i want to present your property as a potential for purchase i really want to help you did you hear how i phrase that i slowed down i really want to help you my inflection was there create that sense I'm not saying act. If you're not, if you're not feeling that, don't say it. If you can truthfully, honestly say, "I want to help you," make that statement because that's where it really comes down. We're trying to create a win-win-win, a win with the seller, a win with the investor in the middle, 
but it went with a retail buyer at the end. Did you have a question, Matt? Yes, I do. Why, tell me, tell me why you remove a popcorn ceiling or <laughs> um, that's going to be an individual house question, so it's going to depend on the deal. Sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't. It just depends on the spread. So we can talk about that more at, at the end, okay, if you have more specific questions like about the specific houses. I just wondered if you did it as a practice so you don't. It depends on the deal. Okay. That's what I'll answer. <laughs> There's different, different investors are going to have different levels of rehab. Some rehab is, some investors are like, hey, I'm spending 40 grand no matter what. That's kind of where my sweet spot is. So if it means remove the ceiling, I'm going to do it. Other <clears> investors are, hey, if I can make $10,000 and keep the volume train going because I do six or eight of these a month, they don't care. Every investor is different. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. I, I run into um, properties, you know, before I used to say, why do I get all these good properties? Yeah. And so um, what I did is I would send them out to investors yep. <coughs> to home, mm -hmm. and I don't wholesale them myself, I just end up doing dual agency. Anytime that you have one of those type of properties, if you want to call me, I'd be happy to make an offer. Call me too. Yep. I'm teaching the class too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just closed on uh, one um, that was a 1954 home. Uh -huh. Woman lived in there forever. Mm -hmm. out, um, started off as a for 110, I think it had 130. Mm -hmm. And uh, I read the real side. Now, for me to be you, I would pull in there as an investor and, and buy some of that whole side out. I'm going to teach you how to do that here. Yeah, but like, see, when I'm sitting with these people, all these parents, because they want to, they have a certain net, and they're not going to do it. You got to throw it out. Open the door. Well, there's, as you go into these meetings, there's going to be, these folks are going to have several different exit strategies. Some of them have heard of open doors, some of them haven't. You're competing with other investors. Well, we buy ugly houses. I, I want two homes to open the door because they want to prove it and that more as an investor. So when I go into those meetings, I have two mindsets. I'm going in first as a wholesaler. If that's not going to work, then I change into realtor hat. Yeah. How can I help you? So this is a value add to your business. So thank you for bringing that up. All right. So then we're going to make the offer. The offer, I always do my offers on the standard AAR forms, and I'll show you all my verbiage here in a few minutes. Again, reinforce your relationship. This is very relationship-based. That's where I found success. You may find success somewhere else. Um, the more I can connect with the person, the more they usually want to use me. Present the offer. The better presentation is in person. If you can do it in person, great. If not, on the phone so you can hear their, their tone. You can hear uh, their voice inflections. Uh, same thing when you're in person. You can read that person in order to see, is this, where are they at? How are they feeling with this? This is, wholesale is kind of like a poker game. You're leading people. Same with buyers and sellers. This is a cash as is offer. And we usually do a, a two week escrow. I've done it in 24 hours. Uh, we've done these in a month. So it just depends on, on what the buyer needs, seller needs. Yes? Why AAR form and not the single or two pages? Form? I like the AAR form, AAR form because I know it very well. Other people, uh, like my buddy Mike, he uses a standard three-page thing that he had a lawyer draft up. Whatever you feel most comfortable with, use that. I like the AAR, AAR form and the folks in our team, I ask them to use it, that way we're safe. Does that only get sued? So my question on that, when you get to this point for the two week so do you actually close on it yeah. or go sell it out? I'll, I do both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Writing the contract. Like we just said, standard AR forms. Uh, we should all know these very, very well. It keeps you safe if you use your standard forms. Uh, what to include? Purchase contract. There used to be an as-is addendum. We don't have that anymore because it's in the, the purchase contract. Uh, market conditions, HOA if needed, wastewater if, and well if needed. I've done a few of those deals wholesale-wise. Be prepared with a pre-qual pre or a proof of funds. God has blessed me. I have a pre-qualification so high that I can buy the moon, pretty much. Anybody that wants to buy something, I can, I'm pre-qualified for it. So if, if you need some help with this, let me know. If you need a wholesale offer, I can buy anything. So 
It just the deal needs to make sense. That's most of what it is. And we'll evaluate that together. Okay, writing the contract. This is where you want to get your phones out and take pictures. This is really important stuff. In section 8A on line 311, these are the additional terms. Buyer retains right of double escrow and seller acknowledges the buyer's intent to close this transaction as an assignment or double escrow. We have just disclosed what our, what our intentions are. We're doing this as an assignment or double escrow. I may or may not be closing on this myself. Most of the time, I sell it to the folks I, I work with. Buyer and seller are aware that this transaction is for the intended profit of both parties. <coughs> I want the seller to make money, don't you? Then you want someone happy so that they refer you to somebody else. That, hey, I had this great experience with this wholesale guy. He got me out of my jam, or she got me out of my jam. Use this person. Buyer and seller agree to extend the close of escrow as needed to identify and cure any additional items that may prevent the seller from providing the buyer free and clear title. That's a big mouthful. What does that mean? You don't want cloud on title. I don't want cloud on title. I want to know about encumbrances. I want to know about liens. I want to know about all that stuff up front. And we are going to, because oftentimes these deals are, we're closing in seven days, or we're closing in 10 days. And then the title report comes up and goes, oh, oh we got a problem. It's already here. We, we all agree that we're going to extend escrow to get this cleared up. Protection. Yes? Everybody on the same page so far? You look like you have a question. You okay, bud? No, I'm good. Okay. Um, close of escrow shall be on or before whatever date. That is paramount because a lot of times people will go, okay, we're done early, let's go. If you don't have that little clause in there, you're like, oh, man, because we want to get paid. Getting paid is almost as fun as getting, that's a bad joke. Uh, ah, that's a bad joke. Um, one or more members of GGB Enterprises is a licensed realtor. You need to disclose your realtor status. Very important. Um, John Dyer will agree with that. Uh, buyer agrees to pay all closing costs. I Most of the time I put that in there, if it's a deal where I can have the seller pay their closing costs and I'll pay my closing costs, I'll do that because that means I'll make a little bit more money. So, but when I sell this to my investor, I always have that in there. Buyer pays all closing costs because then I'm not paying any of the closing costs. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. It nets you more money. Um, also, when you take title, this is just a side note, this is bonus material, take it with an open title policy. So when you buy the property, it's just like selling a car. When, you're, when you have an open title on your car, same thing with the house. Have that open title policy because it will save you money on your second life. And I'll explain that in a second. Uh, buyer waives appraisal contingency and accepts the property in, as is, where is condition. Another piece of bonus material that you want to write down. Buyer is unrepresented. Seller is unrepresented. That way there's no one coming to you and saying, oh, you owe me a commission. No. Cool. Bonus material. Always keep giving. Under contract. Oh, I love this. Let's see if that'll work. So when you get under contract, Oh, it didn't show it. Oh, dang it. Well, Drew Stanton got really excited and danced around. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> so when you get under contract, it's like, woo, I got under contract. What's up? I'm so happy. That's I have a question. When you're doing these contracts, obviously you're doing it as a realtor and you're writing them all down. No. Okay, so there's none. None. No. You're the principal. Yeah. So there's no feature to go for that. No. That well, that's something that you're going to have to talk with Mark and Jeremy about. Because there's no. Then, like, you don't enter the schedule. Doing contracts like not doing realtor. You can disclose that you're doing a contract. This is personal real estate. What you're doing. So you're going to have to talk with the brokerage about that. Gotcha. Have a conversation with Mark and Jerry. So where does it get uploaded? Does ADR need to look at any of this or nothing? This goes to title direct. Okay. That last phrase about the buyer and seller of the presentation? Yes. Are you bringing that in as a clause? That's in my additional terms. Yes, sir. Good question. Okay. So happy, happy, we're under contract. 
Before you go to market, notice this is in, all in capitals. This is a super pay attention to point. Before you go to market this property, you must be under contract. Let me tell you a very sad story. Uh, I was with a brokerage and this beautiful young mom came in and she was so excited. She just scored her first contract. It was a wholesale deal. She was telling everybody about it. It wasn't quite signed yet. Telling the whole world about it, how excited she was that she just, man, she just got, got her first deal. Yay, 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 high fives. And there was this sly fox uh, lady on. in the brokerage that said, oh, really? You got this deal, did you? She's like, yeah, it's not quite signed yet, but I'll have it signed by tonight. <laughs> oh, really? What's the address? Because I might have a buyer. Oh, it's 123 East Bain. Oh, that's so cool. Do you, what purchase price did you come in at? <clears throat> Told her. Oh, thank you. It's so good to see you. See you later. Wow. Drove right over there. Told her, you really don't want to work with this agent. She's brand new. Go with me. I've been doing this for 10 years. Oh. Signed the deal. Agent got screwed. Never, ever, ever market before you're under contract. Did I say that strong enough? Yeah. Yep. I, I care about you guys. I don't want someone to screw you. So please care about yourself. File an aff affidavit of equitable interest with title. I used Ken Stenbridge at first Arizona title. I can make a phone call and say, hey, Ken, drop this on the, drop it on there. I just sent you the contract. Do I do that on every deal? No, I don't. But it's something that I learned from uh, one of my mentors, Torsten. He taught me that. So, so that's a good thing to do. Do not share information with others until you have it under contract. I think I said that already. Um, one last time. Please, for your own safety and the safety of your family, so your, your spouse doesn't get mad at you, don't share that information with somebody else. Yes, what is that? An affidavit of equitable interest basically means the seller cannot take another contract to the title company and say, oh, I sold this. To this um, You would have it under contract first, and then it would be like the seller taking another contract and going to another title company from someone else. Because sellers, I don't always tell the truth. Amazingly enough, they try to scam you too. You're, yes, it does protect you. This is an additional protection. It's like a pack. It's like 10 bucks, 25 bucks. Yeah. Kind of like a lien? Yeah, it's like a lien. Yes, it gets recorded against the house. Exactly. So having a, a, a title rep, an escrow officer that understands this is super important. So ask these questions. Do the title draws the A credit? Yes, okay. title does that. Marketing. Uh, like I said, I used to really put a lot out on my blog spot and then send it out on Facebook and send it all over. I found much more success now with maybe dropping a little note on Facebook. Hey, I've got a wholesale deal in this area. Let me know if you're interested. And then I'll get some new, I'll get guys or ladies that I add to my database and then I text. It's a little bit more daunting, but so much more successful. Um, you can share it on all these places, email blasts, um, I have access to over 22,000 cash buyers. There's 180 so that I work with day in, day out. But I've got access up to that much. So it's very, very, very rare that I, we can't sell a deal. If we can't sell it, it means it's not a deal. Cool. Exit strategies. Assignment, double escrow, fix and flip, rental, rent to own program. These are the exit strategies. Oh, what an ugly assignment. <laughs> Pictures, everybody got a picture? Oh, it's scusi, scusi. Yes, ma'am. I have a question. So if you don't send a contract to someone else and you said it's not a deal, like what do you do with the contract? If it doesn't, if it doesn't go, somebody's going to eat, eat that earnest money. So, yeah, earnest money well. Yep, somebody got a little extra bonus. <laughs> Assignment versus double escrow. This is another picture taking opportunity. Assignments, this is basically, you've heard people write deals that say, GGP Enterprises or, or assigning. Assign. You've seen that, right? Okay, or so or this, is, this is what the or assigning means. You're signing over your position in the contract. You're selling the paper. They're gonna, the new buyer, like you, let's say you're, I'm assigning to you. <coughs> What's your name? Lauren. Lauren, Tracks. Nice to meet you. So Lauren's gonna buy this property from me. You're the, you're the seller. So you and I are under contract. I'm taking my position and go, Lauren, meet, what's your name? Nadia. Nadia. You two are now the buyers and sellers, mm -hmm. and I get a fee out of that middle. At the close of this. Mm -hmm. And it comes to me directly from title. 
That's assignment. The thing with assignment is she knows what I paid. And sometimes, I'm gonna use a bad word, sometimes people get butt hurt when they know what I paid or you paid in the deal. They get very upset because investors make money by taking money, right? And there's this unfortunate <laughs> thing going around called greed. Has anybody heard of greed? Uh, it stinks. So assignments, I only do assignments when I'm making 5,000 or less. That's my hard and fast rule. That way people don't get upset because I don't want my investor to be upset with me because I want to do more business with her in the future. So I don't, I don't want that drama. Do you want that drama? Drama sucks. No, we want to keep working. There's a nominee statement that goes out that all gets handled through title. Double escrow. This is a cool little beast. I like double escrows. The double escrow means she doesn't know what she doesn't know, which is nice. Keeps everybody kind of in the dark. Not that we're trying to keep stuff for people, but if you're making more than $5,000 and you don't want your people, your, your, your database to know, this is a safe way to do it. It's a simultaneous close of both transactions. There's two legs. The first leg is the deal between she and I. The second leg is a deal between she and I. Our deals close at the same time, I get paid money in the middle. Still get paid direct from time. Two separate transactions, funding from the second leg is used to close the first leg. Sir? So you don't need any transactional funding or anything? You just, what, is that called my closing? It's a double escrow. So you're, you and her, you're the buyer. You and her, you're the seller. Correct. So you get to wear the buyer hat and the seller hat all at the same time. It's like two hats at one time. That's the part. Oh, I love this. This is a great way to do it. This is the only way to do it. So oh, the escrow fees a little higher when you go that route? You remember how I said that we're going to have an open title policy? Yeah, but is it just a little higher? You, you pay, <clears throat> if you don't have the open title policy, you're paying two transactions mm -hmm. worth of closing. closing but with costs. open, it's basically the same as one. Open title policy is a smidge more than just one transaction. Gotcha. So it's like, gotcha. it's like 1200 bucks on the front side and 600 bucks on the back side. Okay. So versus... Three grand but that six hundred bucks assures that these two don't know about each other and there doesn't damage your relationship. Yes. It's like relationship insurance. Yes, that's right exactly down. it. That's yeah, how you need. It's a cost of doing business. <laughs> don't get greedy on yourself yeah. on this. Okay, spend money on this. This is wise money. This is not stupid tax. Do you have a question? Mark? No. Okay, sir. <coughs> I saw that aside here. Do you make close investor the same day? Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Which escrow company? I'm going to tell you about that in a few minutes. Assignment, this saves money at title. There's one set of title and escrow fees. It's easier, it's less moving parts. Assignments are super simple. It's usually a one pager that I've got several copies of it. Um, you can find them on the internet. Title companies have them too. Assi assignments are easier. The investor will know what you paid for the property. This is really important because investors, are they get upset about being stung by wholesale fees because they want to make the most money as possible. That's their gig, can't fault them, right? Double escrow. And how I, by the way, how I explain this bonus information, when I'm talking with our group of investors, I talk a lot about we, us, we're doing this together. We all need to make money. I want the best for you, you want the best for me. We want long-term relationships. And then I also kind of caveat it with, if it's gonna, if I see it's gonna be a problem, I do the double escrow. So there's a there's a saying in an adage, it's a proverb. Um, wise, wise people see danger out, out in front of them and they'll take refuge. Foolish people continue down the track. So that's it's a good one, right? I learned that at church this week. Bonus information. Okay, so double escrow, uh, the fees at title, you pay your closing costs and earnings on the first leg. It allows you to keep your earnings and price point private through the transaction. Nope. <laughs> nope. Resources. Oh, thank you. Resources. Uh, there's private money lenders. I have about 10 of these guys. These are just three that I use on a regular basis. Um, fantastic folks. They're here to help. Anybody got a picture? Hey, Sean, you're taking opportunity. Yeah. Title companies and escrow <laughs> companies. You were asking, sir. My favorite, my, and I'm allowed to say this because she is my favorite. Mm -hmm. uh, Ken Stenbridge, she's at First Arizona Title. 
She's been doing this for 38 years, 30, uh, 38 years. Um, don't tell her I told you that. Uh, but however, she is the best of the best with double escrows, with assignments. I have done, the hardest one I did was a 12 unit wholesale deal that had leases, rent rolls, back taxes, liens, all kinds of crap on it. No, it was a wholesale. And she, she hit she hit it. There's no problem for her. She's amazing. So I use her for all my buyers and sellers usually too. First her is on Tyler and Gray. Sir. Let's go back one real quick. There you go. Thanks. Got it. Looks like everybody had a question. Sorry. I didn't mean to go that fast. Good? How about Aileen Brown? Aileen Brown. Eileen Brown, she's in the, there's all kinds of people in the area that loan. I've got different folks in, uh, uh, you're talking about Tyler and Escrow. Eileen yes. Brown, I've used yes, her before. Yes, yes. Um, I know Escrow, it varies from title to Escrow. So you remember time. how I told you, I'm going to tell, I'm just going to tell an arbitrary story. Okay. I'm going to not use real names to protect the guilty and the innocent. So there's certain title companies that you can trust and there's others that you can't. I did have an experience once where I paid the double escrow money, I paid the fee, meant to keep the everybody separate so that there's no upsetness, and a certain title company and title officer brought both files in, disclosed to my end buyer what my price was, then I had a very upset person, the relationship got damaged, they did try to make it right and credited me back the double escrow fee of, I think it was 700 bucks, but. 700 bucks doesn't help my relationship so and now since then i've only so i was selling that person three to four a month and now i'm it's been like two in the last three months because of that incident so certain people you can trust notice these people these are people i trust other people that aren't on this list don't ask me about who at the lawyer's title she left lawyer's title so i need to take that out okay Kim Stembridge is my favorite. Did I mention that? Um, yeah. For 38 years. 38 years. But don't mention yes, that. Yes, ma'am. Do you want a prelim in your, I mean, I know you don't want to tax the title when it gets time, but do you want a prelim before you just during the contract? No. No. You run your numbers. If the numbers make sense, then you do it. There's another question over here. No? Cool. Okay. Uh, private coaching event is available. At, I coach and teach, so that, that's a, just I'll mention that. Any questions? My biggest question for you all is, did you walk away with a nugget of information today? Oh yeah. Did this help? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I want to be a value add to you all. Please take a moment to go through this. Do yourself and your family a favor. Add this to your business. It will help you drastically. Quick question on that assignment okay. form. Do you have your own or do you use the title will have one? Okay. Title will also have assignment fee, assignment forms okay. as well. Okay. Uh, I also have a distribution agreement if there's a few of us. Oftentimes I do deals with two or three different wholesalers to get it to the end user and we'll have one, of, you know, we're splitting up 15,000 or so between us and we'll have a distribution agreement of so-and-so gets this much, I get this much and you get that much whatever the split is from after I'll answer your question just a second whatever the split is from the the total transaction after paying closing costs okay. Okay. yes ma'am pretty simple somewhere there was a sign up sheet oh is there where did the sign up sheet right go here. yay did everybody <coughs> sign in no no because no. it never came anywhere okay well everybody please sign in did you get to sign in okay cool sir how does that relate to the choice of It's huge right now. Our wholesale wholesale has been impacted drastically because of the jump in the market. The POS houses that were usually ours to wholesale are now on the market and investors or hedge funds are buying them at retail. Yeah. So it's really where they, like there's no deals at the auction right now. There's not, you know, hedge funds are buying at retail. Mm -hmm. So really to find the deal, you gotta Drum them up yourself. Cerberus. Yep. Yes, How do you find your uh, uh, below market value properties? Database. Market. Just just like I went through. Exactly. Direct mail? Don't know. I don't. I don't direct mail. I don't door knock. 
I talk to people, but good old fashioned. I know it's scary. <laughs> Holy crap, we're gonna open our mouths and have a conversation. That's how it works. Listen, that's how it works. Listen. Do you have a quick, easy formula to calculate? Do you have in class, just, you know, your spreadsheet, it was pretty simplistic. Yeah. I know that you, you have to do it like that. Mm -hmm. So I'll look at, usually out of all the deals I've done, most rehabs run between 15 to $35,000 if you're staying below the $400,000 ARV. That's where most deals are. If you're getting into five, six, eight hundreds, that's a whole nother deal. That's a whole, nother, that's dangerous waters because there's not very many buyers there. 400 and under, staying within a nice conventional loan. If you can get 300 and under and be able to hit FHA, woo -woo, yes, that's where you want to be. So rehab, I just, off the top of my head, I know we're going to be somewhere between 15 and 35,000. If I'm moving walls, replacing cabinets, 35,000 is usually there. Is that holding cost to all of the Holding cost is, um, I usually do four months. That that formula was, that formula was uh, four months carry cost. And you can tweak on that. It's just an Excel sheet. You know, and I'm, if you send me an email and ask for, I'll, I'll be happy to share with you guys. Yeah. On a, on a typical, wholesale deal if, an, if there's let's say it's like in your 250 300 dollar price range for yes. the home, is a fifty thousand dollar return good it's fantastic <laughs> yeah. yeah that's, that's huge uh, yeah. right now as this gentleman was asking me about the market the market is so hot right now they can list it and make oftentimes make that money if if you're making 50 grand on that, yeah, that is enormous. Uh, I have a lot of investors that are trying to make 15%, which is sometimes 10 to $12,000. Um, yeah, so if you're getting 50 grand, that's an excellent deal. Do it. Any other questions? I want to talk to you afterwards. Okay. So just remember that. Is it, is it harder to be a licensed realtor and, and do books and wholesale? Yes. Legality. You have to obey have the rules. About, have you thought about giving you up your life? Disclose. No. Or just disclose. Or no. disclose. You just have to disclose. So Always. Yeah. That's really it. Um, one of the things a brokerage talked about quite a bit is being very careful about contracting your own stuff on the fix and flip. As long as you disclose, I contracted this because I am the owner of record. I don't have to have a permit because I am the owner of record. This is what I did. These are the people I used. Disclosure. If it's disclosed, you're fine. What the brokerage is upset about is non-disclosure of what was done. And, and I'll, I'll caveat this. Out of the 180 guys, or ladies I work with, there are some that are fantastic, outstanding, upstanding people that do fantastic jobs and their name is out there as a flipper that people want to buy from. Um, Rafter House is an example of that. Those guys are flippers. And they do a great job, and keep, those homes are in high demand. Right, I mean, right? most of them cut corners, and it's visible. Some. So if your rehab sucks, I'm going to tear it out. Where's the yep. profit then? Exactly. So a lot of newbie investors try to come in and cut corners to save ten dollars. It's stupid. They shoot themselves in the foot. Do a quality rehab, and you'll get more business. It's that whole thing we were talking about earlier: relationships, longevity. If you're trying to flash in the pan, this. Not only are you gonna hurt yourself, you're gonna get sued. So be careful. Somebody else had another question? No? Yes. If no one else, if you use the AAR contract, the nine page contract, yes. if people are looking, going for a wholesale or open door, or open pack, they are looking for just a free listing sale. Um, to explain nine page contract is different if they haven't seen it before. It's different than explaining one of Pages purchase contract. You can use whatever you feel comfortable with. I feel comfortable with the nine pager. That's me. Okay. So I'm, I'm you telling you, I don't know how you do business. No, do you explain the, the oh, nine yeah. page to them? Yes. Do you sit down like a regular uh, mm -hmm. listing appointment? Yep. Yeah. I'll sit with them and say, this is this is what OfferPad will give you. Blah, 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 blah. They're going to charge you, they're going to give you this price point, and then they're going to charge you 9%. Yeah. Okay. So your 2,000 or 200,000 price point that they gave you is really 182. Yes. Make sense? Yes. So I'll go through that with that. Okay. Who else had another question? So 9% open price is usually 9% and open Or more. Open door. It's more. Or more. Or more. Or more. Yeah. 9 to 12. Yeah. 9 to 12. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep, that's it. Be a value add. That's what matters most. Thank you all very much for coming and listening to me. Great day. Have a great day. Go make money. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Did, did, uh, Good luck with this. I hope that one goes through. I can use it. Is this a microphone or a camera right now?